Playing a video game on an iPad isn't unusual. This game, called Coin Soccer, is quick-paced, requiring some dexterity and good eye-hand coordination. And the goal, if you'll excuse the pun, is to score three goals oh, I got it. before the computer does. Some players struggle to move the coin-like objects, and they all get the whistle for illegal moves. I hate it when that happens. But what they each do after playing coin soccer is very unusual. I can't seem to move the coin when I'm swiping with my finger. They enter their personal reactions in a journal. I also began to learn by watching as the computer moved its coins. It's all part of research being conducted by Dr. John Creswell, an applied research methodologist here at the University of Nebraska. Creswell is interested in gaming research, and his goal is to develop a survey that can be given to hundreds of people. A survey is a traditional method of collecting quantitative information, such as means and distributions. But a journal is one way of getting an in-depth picture of player reactions, which can then assist in survey development. That might really get at people's experiences. Such experiences are a type of qualitative data. I think it may become boring over time. Creswell could have developed his final survey by simply field testing a set of pilot questions. In other words, using a preliminary quantitative measure, a pilot survey, to develop his final survey. But there are advantages to adding a qualitative step. So it gives you kind of the rich detail that no survey instrument, no quantitative measure is really going to give you. The integration of qualitative and quantitative data is called mixed methods research, a field Creswell helped to pioneer. Hey, thanks for coming in today. I really appreciate your time. And Creswell will illustrate how to conduct a mixed methods study. We're going to talk a little bit about playing that coin soccer video game. These eight participants have played coin soccer for two weeks now, and this focus group is a second qualitative phase that will be used to supplement their journals. It gives you uh, more detail, for one. It gives you personal stories, anecdotes. First, whom do they think the game's appropriate for? I think it's a, it's a good game for anyone 10 or above. And one player suggested her grandfather. It's so easy, um, and he's 90, and I could, all you have to do is just flick it. So I could see him enjoying that, actually. There were areas of disagreement about the game. The biggest skill that I would take away from it is patience. I like the complexity of the movement of the coin when you flick it. Um, deciding when to let go. It was hard to get the coin to where I wanted it to go all the time, so that got a little frustrating and you get bored quickly when you're not good at it. And it also gives you the variation. We had quite a few people with different perspectives going on in there. And some were critical. It has a real <laughs> sterile, quiet feel to it. I thought I had shot my coin, but I, but I hadn't. Um, it, it was still there and then it said um, illegal move and, and bright um, red letters. It should at least make me laugh or have some variety or some trash talk or, or something. <laughs> Armed with the focus group's qualitative feedback, Creswell heads off to combine this with the participants' journals, which have been previously transcribed. And you can see here where I have uh, created one-inch margins on each side so that I can write notes in. You can kind of see I'm working with small sections here, and here they're beginning to talk about the illegal moves. Creswell identifies over 60 kinds of comments and then organizes the comments by themes, seen here in bold. If I had a larger database, I would have used one of the qualitative computer software programs. He quickly designs a pilot survey, which the participants take during a break. But now the participants are back for a second focus group a qualitative phase to help improve the quantitative instrument. Let's talk about this survey that you filled out. Have you got any thoughts about what you liked about it and what you didn't like, ways we can change it? I don't know how to answer one of the questions. Uh, it's like the, how many times do you p uh, play the game every day? So actually sometimes I don't play the game. So I don't know how to answer that question. So you may not play it every day? No. I have the same problem. I don't play necessarily every day. I learned mostly that I needed to work on the 
the background, the demographic questions at the beginning. So let's summarize this mixed methods approach. Two qualitative phases, a journal and a focus group, led to a pilot survey, a quantitative measure, which the focus group evaluated. A revised survey, the final quantitative phase, will now be given to a larger population. In short, the value of coin soccer was seen through a unique approach of combining quantitative and qualitative methodology. From healthcare and social science settings to schools, mixed methods research is now being used widely. They all are beginning to see the value of gathering people's stories along with the numbers. Where do I see it in 10 years? I think it's going to be the dominant methodology. We always say in mixed methods you have a more complete picture of an understanding of the problem than either quantitative or qualitative by itself would yield.